I'm very happy to be in Berlin today. I think we've rescheduled the meeting with uh, Ole five times or something um, over the last half a year, every time something came across the way. Um, Ole is the speaking trainer, speaking coach of Christoph for his keynotes. So I think he's done an amazing job because I love Christoph's keynotes. And uh, we're doing two things today. I want to take a look at the space because he just um, did a really big renovation. Uh, and I think the architect is going to be there. Let's have a look, hopefully. Um, so we'll go through his, uh, through his space. And also, we will work a bit on my keynote. I'm very excited for that because um, I've been waiting for that forever. They don't have any. Well, nice because you're carrying the red and I carry the luggage. Hi. Great to have you here. Thank you for the book. Yeah. Which I'm not supposed My pleasure. to do the video, but I'll do it anyway. Um, I haven't looked into it, but it, uh, it just came out yesterday. Yeah, last week. Last week. Uh, yes. And uh, I love the cover. Uh, I love the inside. And basically, uh, I haven't read it yet. I'm going to on the way back. Um, but you said it's everything um, that you need to have the greatest keynote. Yes. Tell me, like, just one or two sentences. Yeah, it's, it's uh, so targeted uh, towards people like you who want to um, develop a new keynote, uh, keynote presentation. Um, that's uh, one target group. Uh, second target group are corporate innovation teams. Mm -hmm. um, you know that nowadays uh, in corporate innovation, uh, oftentimes uh, teams get uh, sourced to work for, let's say, 100 uh, days on a new uh, business model. Mm -hmm. And then they are supposed to present, present those ideas uh, to the management board in order to get funding mm -hmm. to implement the project. And they, and they don't know how to present that. So this book is uh, helping them step by step to get there. To get the story right. To get the story right. And uh, we use design thinking and storytelling in mm -hmm. order to get to a really concise five minute pitch. Uh, which you would also uh, usually uh, see uh, in startup presentations, yeah. which is our third uh, target group, uh, startups, uh, again in the corporate innovation environment. We work for APX, which is the startup uh, program of Axel Springer and Porsche. That's also where we work uh, together, <laughs> because uh, Daniel did the design of the office space as well. Okay, nice. And uh, here we work with the startups, and everything that we teach also has been developed there over the last, uh, last six years. Right. I'm very excited to see the space because I've heard a lot. We met, like we wanted to meet already a couple of months ago, but then every time we had to reschedule. Yes. I just said that. Um, as I said, uh, downstairs, Ole is the, how do you call yourself, keynote um, the, do you coach or yeah, this speaking is coach? Yeah, it's definitely one thing that I also do. Um, yeah. I would consider myself being more an innovation consultant right. uh, with a focus on communication. And I'm also a professional presenter myself. Because, of course, I link you to Christoph and I see his keynotes and I think they, you think they still, they have... Oh, <laughs> no, they're already, they, they're, they're good. They're very good. good. Yeah, uh, I think they're amazing. I think there's like, yes. Christoph to me is like one of the most inspirational persons. So, yeah. But uh, you still like, there's still potential. Yeah, there's always potential yeah. uh, to iterate. I yeah. guess the same is true for a room like this. Um, you come up with the first idea and uh, then you might uh, bring it to a specific uh, level of maturity where you can present it. Let's say in a keynote, you would present it on stage, but obviously afterwards you can still iterate, like everything but in you life. Can, yeah, I think that's a nice, like we, we are currently developing our own workspace too, and I've been in the space for two or three weeks. Um, now re, like really rearranging, rebuilding things, and it's so nice that you can also develop it on the go. And I guess that's the same what you do there as well. Yes, yeah, yes. Taking in feedback and see how it feels. How does it? I think this impact. is uh, this is also an attribute of our time, isn't it? That uh, you would be way more flexible mm -hmm. uh, in the concept development, but also in the finished concept. Uh, flexible in terms of gathering feedback or um, understanding the real use cases. 
So if we stick with the room, for example, uh, you might come up with the idea of how the room is used, but then the reality might uh, look a bit differently. And then to incorporate this behavior into the next iteration of the design, I think that's an attribute of our time, right? Yeah, Which I think was also the idea behind the space here, right? Did mm -hmm. you want to start like going through it? Did you want, do we want to start downstairs or here or what was the idea like? Well, ba basically, the task was to create something very agile that can change all the time. So mm -hmm. um, that's why we also, you know, like the, the tables, all this is are like prototypes. So mm -hmm. if we feel they work successful, we were discussing on using them in other projects, like for the new office for RPX now that we're doing, nice. and also other places. But we really kind of like testing it. Also, like the idea of the whiteboard, so that's, that's a new company that um, just makes this huge whiteboard that you can really fix on the boards without borders and all this. It's also like a test, you know, how, how these guys can work with it based on the kind of like knowledge that we had from here. They already consulted like RPX, for instance, so we will incorporate some of these ideas in there as well. And also, basically, the idea was to use things that, you know, you can also not order for a long time. So for instance, all this furniture, this is like Ikea back. So all of this, the carcass is from Ikea and it's yeah. like hacks. So this is other companies, you know, some startups that do hacks for Ikea things. This, yeah. this so is a specific company is called Superfront. Uh -huh. And you could order those fronts and then you can kind Which of individualize. Which is nice because we still need fronts for all. Uh, we have an old build in Ikea closet in you one see? of our rooms. Yeah. So and I don't want to. I don't want to put like regular closets. Yeah, and you will see more of that stuff downstairs. But cool. um, so, so we had a couple of ideas in mind while we were conceptualizing the design of this office. Mm -hmm. uh, the first comes uh, from the world of design thinking. Mm -hmm. So when you think about what design thinking really needs in order to be successful, mm -hmm. it's um, first and foremost you need to have a good diverse team. A team with various backgrounds that works together on one idea. That's first and foremost, most important point. Then secondly, you need to have the process ready. So the different steps that you go through in the design thinking process in order to generate new ideas for businesses or services or products. And the third is the room. So you need to have a proper room which is set up to think in design sprints. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things is that uh, the room needs to be built for um, a lot of purposes. Mm -hmm. So one would be ideation in front of a whiteboard. This is why you need to have a lot of um, vertical visualization space. Mm -hmm. um, and everything in design thinking is done visually. Mm -hmm. So even uh, the small why sketches. Why need to be vertical? Um, because uh, you would be standing like we are yeah. standing right now in front of a vertical visualization space and then we would be drawing. Yeah. Um, whereas if it would be just in front of us horizontally, then it might be a bit... Are people less energetic and less... Um... Y yes, uh, but more compared to sitting. Mm -hmm. So if you would be sitting all the time, this doesn't help you to really get into the crafting mode. Mm -hmm. So you need to be standing, you need to be uh, able to work with your hands, mm -hmm. and the room therefore needs to be very flexible. Mm -hmm. um, maybe sometimes you want to sit on, on a desk like this, but um, it's also built for standing, as you can see. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it it's, again serves various uh, purposes. But what is also important is that you could remove the furniture, mm -hmm. and then you would have an open space. Yeah. And you could use that space uh, for presentations, for example. Um, so you can create different scenarios in one and the same space. And another thing, uh, I, I guess, which is also was very important, is that idea that we could get out of this office mm -hmm. within a day, mm -hmm. easily. Mm -hmm. You know, three people, we get all the stuff from the walls and we are out. Why is that important? Because I think that nowadays, as everything is so liquid and fluid and fast and uh, companies also need to be able to react to it like this. Mm -hmm. Maybe we need a larger space mm -hmm. uh, next month or in two months because uh, we have a large client. Were you looking long time for this space here? Like how was mm -hmm. the situation in Berlin right now? Like it's really tough. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just by chance. Okay. So I looked at Immobilien Scout, I found this place, I said uh, let's have a look at it and oh. within one week we decided to go here. Nice. And uh, yeah, so but I think that uh, th this idea of agility needs to be incorporated also in the space itself. Mm -hmm. So take the stuff, get out, that's it. And also what Daniel just uh, pointed out, that this is IKEA stuff. I mean, this maybe costs, uh, I don't know, 30 euros. Mm -hmm. 
the fronts are a bit more expensive, but it's not so much of a loss if you get rid of it, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can also take more expensive things, but we like the idea of then rather... Inspiring stuff. Is that a draw I need to take home? Yeah. <laughs> you need to put the, put the book in there. <laughs> yeah. No. yeah, it's just uh, stuff that we found inspiring. Oh, nice. Yes. So... Uh, that's one part. Maybe the rest uh, we explain downstairs. Yeah. If you yeah. Want to. Do you know that the, the yellow, of course, is also, I mean, you do know Chris of Keynote, so the yellow is also a big part of us, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sneak in and uh, have a look what we can take, take home when we move in next week. Yeah, you know how we made the decision for the yellow? <laughs> was also very agile. We saw, we saw this, and we thought, oh, that's a nice color. Yeah. Let's use it. So our painter, he took it to uh, his, uh, to the, uh, yes, yeah, and then uh, we, <laughs> yes, yeah, that's what you, well, also the book is in this neon green, yeah, but it's neon green, so we, uh, it, we have neon green, we have neon pink, um, then there's neon yellow, everything which is related to post-it note. Yeah, it's cool, love it. I mean, it's worth, you can already see as I said before, it has a very good energy. So we could go this path, mm -hmm. which, is which is a dangerous path, or we could go the more conservative path. It's up to you. We'll take the dangerous path. Oh, yes. I love that. Yannick, please don't fall. I'll try. You did know that I uh, started five years in Amsterdam, so this is like, That's normal. for is me, it? it's beginners. So, hopefully Yannick. Yannick will handle it. So you can see over there, small detail. Yannick? Yeah. Have a look at this, Yannick. I turn it on. Ah! <laughs> it's a super dangerous path. <laughs> it's so yeah, dangerous. It's very, I mean, you, I already read the song Sorry. upstairs, but you really about the details, right? You already see in the bathroom, yeah, there's little balls in, yeah, the, yeah. in the bathtub. For instance, this is for, for the kind of like, how I say, the schuppe. Yeah. So, but we use it here to make hangers. And they have bigger meetings with more I clients, love that. so you can use it. So it's basically taking very simple things that you can get from almost the Baumarkt or something. You know, yeah. Putting them out of context and then becoming something completely different. I love it. Show me and more of those hacks. Look, uh, this is another hack. Um, now... What is this? is for acoustics. This is for acoustics. So this is when you're in a bad mood and you want to hug your collar. <laughs> yes. <and now> you <laughs> Yes, yeah, this is also good for that. You know, it's like on Amazon, it's seven euros. Yeah. And so we've just took it a bit out of context and we've cut it in the way you see it here and then it becomes a design element, right? Okay, and so for you it's not about acoustics, but it's about design. No, it is about acoustics, yeah. but it's also, and I guess that's also what Daniel achieved here, is that we took those everyday elements and uh, we've maybe just implemented them in a bit more thoughtful way and then uh, they become a design element, you know? So basically, a lot of things here, for instance. I mean, the space is based that you know you enter, mm -hmm. you have here the teaching element, the whiteboard, and at the end, the final product will be the presentation. So that's why the stage is at the end. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But also, the stage, we lifted it and we put soft material in order to improve the acoustics in this room. Because mm -hmm. that was the biggest problem here. Because you see, you have a concrete ceiling, concrete floor, concrete wall, yeah. and all glass. So the acoustic was really, really bad here. Yeah. So, this little element, sometimes you know, they're part of a lamp. Sometimes they're like uh, movable, so these ones are based on, on magnets and you can put them on the back of whiteboards, you know. So these little things, you find them everywhere, but they're helping for the main reason to improve the acoustics here. But you might not see it for straight away. Yeah. yeah. But those details, I think, uh, make this room uh, very special and very warm, while at the same time, it's very practical and we can just take out all the stuff again and we're out in a day. It's almost a little bit playful, like yes. in a way you get to, yes. let's do this, like let's, yes. and let's uh, use it, let's play, like let's get correct. things done. And it's not ready, yeah. it's yeah. just, uh, now it's good for now mm -hmm. and maybe uh, next year when the requirements change, then we change it again. But maybe three more um, ideas that helped us to design this space. Uh, we worked a lot with metaphors. Mm -hmm. For example, one metaphor to us is the store, retail store. Mm -hmm. So 
here, what is special about a retail store is that everything is set up in a way that should invite the people to buy something. Mm -hmm. So it's very tidied up, everything has its place, and you like to browse as a client through it, and uh, that's, that was very important for us. Mm -hmm. So that whenever we have a meeting, everything at the beginning is super nicely uh, tidied up, and it will also be tidied up in between, and at the end, it will be directly brought into this uh, mode again, mm -hmm. so that by chance, if a camera team pops in, pops in uh, like now, everything is just there. And, um, to us, this doesn't end at the surface, mm -hmm. but as you could see in our drawer upstairs, everything is very tidied up. Mm -hmm. So that with one, um, with one uh, action, you can get the stuff that you need. Mm -hmm. Not thinking about, is it there, how much do we have there, or where, where is it? It's just like, it's there, and we can use it. The second metaphor... I'm going to open all your closets, you know that, yeah. right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's at least, yeah, we learned from Steve Jobs, you know? Uh, we, we took that from yeah. Steve Jobs okay. and uh, we try to achieve it. Not everything is really like that, but uh, we, at, at least it's a good metaphor to get there. The second one uh, to us was uh, the, the um, hotel. Mm -hmm. So let, let's go back into the idea of a store. Have you ever went to the restroom in a usual retail store? Mm -hmm. How, how is the experience? It's usually not that nice, right? I just went to a coffee shop last week and I'm like, I'm so sorry, but I have to go to the toilet and I have to go now. Do you have, do you have a toilet? And he's like, yeah, I have one. And it was like, I literally had to climb things and it was, it was totally so not, nice. yeah, the, yeah, that was like, you, you don't <laughs> want to know. Thing. Yeah, that's how, I mean, that was probably a very bad scenario, but. Yeah, and oftentimes, even in more pretty uh, uh, retail stores, yeah. the front might be super nice, yeah. but they tend to forget the bathroom. Yeah. And then the, most thing, uh, sometimes they have a bit of a, of a, a nice smell there or something, but that's it. Yeah. And we thought, okay, how is it done in a hotel? Yeah. In a hotel, everything looks nice, mm -hmm. you know? And um, also the bathrooms look super nice and everything is there in abundance. Mm -hmm which is also a nice metaphor for us as, uh, the, as the team. If we are in the hotel mode, we know that we need to uh, be good hosts to the people that come. So you're friendly at all times. So when I just used the bathroom upstairs, uh, the first thing I realized is the smell. Mm -hmm. The second thing is I realized you uh, have, um, I mean, the, the quality of lotion and soap you give to people. I realized I, I smell mm -hmm. it and I think, does the smell match the, I mean, that's how, how far I would go in that mm -hmm. sense. And then I saw all the all the little plastic balls in the bathtub because yep. you probably don't use it, yeah, it but it's still for, for telephone. You know, yeah, or you can just you throw it at you. Yeah. So I want to take a look upstairs again once we once we're done here. And also, like you know, like what Ole said, that this hospitality mode is like these little details. Like for instance, there's a built-in little vase there. You know, that is, has its place because you cannot move it. It's in the hole. It's almost like in the first Beetle car where they implemented this. Yeah little thing, but you know, it's there and it's all in place. So I think that's also a very important thing that you have to think of. And you don't see the mops and all this, you know, because like storage is important. So like all the old bottles, you know, they go in places where they're hidden and all this. So I this, get so inspired for all old space. Yeah, <laughs> so yeah everything is me you, know, you When you design it, because that's, mostly people forget it, you know, they you know. design and then they forget these places. But everything is tidied up and also everything needs to be self-explanatory. I love it. <laughs> it's a bit nerdy. Yeah, but again, I mean, I love, I love that for myself. So like at home, and I can put the pasta in a pasta box and then yes. write pasta on yes. it. And yes. like all the old stuff goes into a drawer, old stuff. And whatever. It makes life easier. Yeah, it makes life easier. Way easier. The idea here is also that the room can be rented. So, you know, like some yeah. groups could rent this for workshops, for creative things, even with How no many one. people fit in the space and how many people work here on a daily base and how big are your workshops? Like, so I would say um, t 12 to 15 people mm -hmm. is, the, is the perfect amount. You could have up to 20 mm -hmm. in a workshop setting, mm -hmm. but then it gets a bit packed. Um, when we would redesign the space, let's say for an event, because we have a tiny stage over there, mm -hmm. then uh, yeah, you could easily pack it doesn't a lot more. Play to on the outside. Huh? It doesn't say play do on the outside. Yeah, that's true. Uh, that's uh, part of our, um, this thing is eigentlich überflüssig. It's superfluous at the moment. Uh, we used to have uh, prototyping material in there, yeah. which we now located in there, but uh, yeah, still over. But uh, I owe you the third uh, metaphor um, that we had, and that was uh, the metaphor of a club. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, so, how do you feel in a club? You feel it's leisure time, you feel good, um, you are socializing with people and you listen to music. And this is usually also a thing that uh, as an atmosphere we like to create here in this office. We can just show you. Yeah. So, and all of a sudden the whole atmosphere changes just because of the music. <laughs> yeah. And now sometimes if we run workshops, we have the music uh, um, uh, really tuned down. tuned down in the background. But also what once happened uh, when we were preparing a room at I think eight o'clock in the morning for a workshop with the client, we were listening uh, very loudly to Queen. Okay. And uh, then a couple of uh, um, participants from the client for that workshop, they came a bit earlier and they were already hearing the music downstairs. And they were so happy about the music. Yeah. And it creates this whole vibe of um, this is not typical work. This yeah. is not a typical workspace. And it relaxes people. It 100%. It's like meditation, right? Like 100%. when they hear something they connect to. Yeah, and, and it helps also groups to work separately because you know, if you have a little bit of this background noise, you're not concentrating on what the others are saying. So that also helps by working on separate groups in this yes. space. Yes. And, uh, we like to rephrase what professionalism means. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people, I think, mistake, still today, mistake professionalism with being tied up, very formal. And I think that professionalism does not necessarily have to come in that form. It can also be wearing a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. It can be a bit more informal language. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, um, you have all the knowledge and you can bring it into a productive uh, conceptualization of something. And then this relaxes so people as well. So you're saying maybe it's less about the outside, like all the you know, formal stuff, like how you, you know, how you dress, how you, but more about the inside, like what the content, like what you say, yeah. what you do, what you... You, you need know. to be knowledgeable, yeah. that's for sure. But I will show you one more thing. Um, this book, How to Swear. Um, it's only sitting there because it has a yellow cover. Yes. <laughs> no, it's there. Uh, because we, and very prominently, so that the participants of our classes, mm -hmm. they, when they browse the room, mm -hmm. they see it. Mm -hmm. And we, st we always wait for the second day when someone actually is a bit too early in the class and then they start to take that and you can see how they then are in a corner somewhere, they're reading it and you can hear them giggling. <laughs> And uh, so, oh, I saw it before. It's it's. What's your what's your favorite part? Of, uh, what's your favorite page? Uh, chapter chapter one. Fuck, I mean, uh, what? This, this, I think that's the best name for a chapter ever invented. Where is it? Nineteen. Yeah, I need to get that book. Chapter one. Fuck. So now, of course, we don't want to teach people how to swear, but this is a linguistic very professional approach to swearing, which makes it uh, also uh, funny. But we want them to understand that professionalism and design and uh, also business uh, thinking can be enriched by a bit of a different language. And more. And, yes. Yeah, it's nice. Yes. So, and then um, um, a workshop participant would, if, if she or he can... I'll link it in the description. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a fantastic book. Also a nice gift. Yeah, we hope that we give the people the chance to transform a bit within our classes by just reframing what professionalism means to them and how they can in integrate imperfection mm -hmm. and their very individual view on the world into their work. And they don't have to hang that somewhere outside and then be a professional person only inside. Mm -hmm. You know? That's it. Yeah. yeah. Also, yeah. also like the, the space is professional, it provides you all the services and all this. For instance, you know, this table. Yeah, is everything there. is here, right? You don't need so to worry about anything. Correct. And it's organized. Yes. So the tables are movable, you know, so yeah. you can just so pull there. this in, you can move it around. But at the same time, you, you know, charges for phones are all integrated already. So, you know, like. My phone's empty, I need to recharge it. And that's always the question if someone comes, you know, where's the cable or something? But here, yeah, everything's prepared. I didn't and dare. We especially <laughs> put it also down, so, you know, nice. that they're not lying on the tables where mostly people have it then. Did you have the tables made or did you um, buy them? Like they're custom made, yeah. yeah. they're custom made. But they're like prototypes, you know, so they're especially not refined with paint or anything. So, we learn from this and for the next iteration we definitely improve them as well. Mm -hmm. But we're thinking of, you know, like this developing as a product so that can be also 
like all the thoughts that are in there and all the kind of like knowledge that we gather to kind of like give it to other people as well to use them. Yeah, I think that's a really the cool thing about our time is everything is available mm -hmm. at, at a fingertip. And now it's just about your idea to bring that stuff together. Mm -hmm. And you would not build stuff forever. I think that's also something that we learn. You build stuff for the moment um, and then the only thing I think we can get better in is uh, incorporating the idea of sustainability. Yeah. Uh, because now with everything that we are doing here, it's, it's okay, it's not, it's the, the negative impact is not too big, mm -hmm. but we could think more about reusability of things. And that's, uh, I guess, one of the next iterations also for us, mm -hmm. uh, that we think more about uh, what's our direct environmental impact that we have versus convenience. Why could you start? Like, is there anything that pops up to your mind? Yeah, I think the first thing is uh, that we get a new coffee machine. Mm -hmm. uh, I, that's really uh, super annoying. We bought that already used. Mm -hmm. So um, we thought, okay, it's better to have a used one than to buy a new one. Um, and it's very convenient with those aluminum capsules. Mm -hmm. But I hate those aluminum capsules and uh, I want to get rid of them. Uh, so this would be the first thing. But then if you think about, okay, we buy a new coffee machine. What's the alternative? What, what's the alternative? And here already, there are a lot of resources in there, mm. in the machine itself. Mm. So if you would buy a new coffee machine, how long would it take you to get a positive impact? Mm. How much coffee do you have to brew? Uh, because this might be not in use anymore. Mm. But there's al aluminum, plastics, and everything already in there. So the, the, a lot of thoughts. But we think about uh, stuff that we buy, which is already used and uh, th that uh, we, doesn't hurt if it's not there anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So, and then, uh, so again, multi-purpose room, uh, working uh, with your team on the whiteboard is one thing, and then being able to present your ideas on the stage is the second thing. And again, this is IKEA. Mm -hmm. You see, these are all IKEA drawers. Conference system. <laughs> and, um, Sound suddenly change. It's different here. It's it different, feels right? different. Yeah. Yes. So they do little, just very little things. Do you get like spotlights? Like yeah, we are, they should have been on the ceiling already, uh, but somewhat I uh, our. I my lamp from the construction. Yeah, <laughs> from oh, that's good. That's so a good you idea. Get, like, you almost get burned when yes. you're sitting in yeah. front of it. Yeah. Uh. I was painting the doors, going like, hmm, uh. where's, where's the hair? Where's the little thing on it? So, yeah. So are you really crafting in your new yeah. office as well? Yeah. So you really help them building yeah. the stuff? Yeah. I like that yeah. idea. No, we built the stuff. You built the stuff yourself? Yeah, we built it ourselves. Oh, like great. every single piece you see here, we would just do ourselves. Oh, that's so yeah. cool. Yeah. But that's my, my personal, I love it. Yeah. So, so cool. <laughs> Let's see. Maybe it falls apart next week, like the week we move on, but we'll see. But then you do it again. Oh, but also yeah. then, you know, it has a history. You put yeah. your yeah. thoughts in, in your life. So. And you love. Yeah, yeah. I guess uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, um, what we, what also is of importance for us is that we are in the center of Berlin. Mm -hmm. You know, you're right in here. You wouldn't yeah. expect this room to be you're here. Five minutes from the from central station. From the central station, um, it's which is unique in Berlin because most of the time you put in another hour. Like when I looked up how to get here, I'm like, oh. Great, it's just five minutes from yes, the station. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, and that uh, was was big luck for us. But being central. Mm has always been important to me mm -hmm. and um, it's uh, yeah it's just it's just a big advantage not only because of the uh, of the um, traveling to and from that space but also because if you pop out the door you're in the city mm -hmm. and this does so much to the people especially if they're not from Berlin let's say they come from Mannheim or another German city and they uh, can experience Berlin right away yeah. and I love that you can have this background uh, still, it's kind of quiet here. You look outside, it's green, which is also not really, mm -hmm. I mean, you don't see that a lot, so yes. it's really nice. Yes, and all the windows we could again use for post-its. <laughs> well, everything. <we> <laughs> everything. Let's take a look at the bathroom upstairs. Yes. I really want to yes. go to the Super dangerous path again. Yes, so... Your best three. My best three. Oh, it's so hard to say. Um, at the moment... Well, uh, at this is the first one. 
<laughs> yeah, my own book. Of course, it's like smelling on your own underwear. <laughs> no, it's not my. It's not my own book. At the moment, I'm reading a book on um, psychobiotics. Okay. So how our gut yeah. changes our mood, nice. the gut bacteria. That's really super interesting. Yeah. Uh, that's on my shelf at the moment. Uh, other than that, I think all the books from Yuval Noah Harari mm -hmm. I like a lot. Mm -hmm. So um, A Brief History of Mankind, mm -hmm. which he wrote, um, but also Homo Deus. Mm -hmm. I thought mm -hmm. it was really eye-opening. Yeah. And uh, also just quite recently I've uh, finished uh, the last book of Stephen Hawkins. Mm -hmm. um, the this German title. This the German title is uh, "Kurze Antworten auf große Fragen." Yeah, yeah. And uh, the book is amazing. Yeah. Yes. So if you want to understand what happened before the universe, yeah. uh, he can explain you. Yeah. I cannot. But he answers also funny questions like, "What happens?" if you fall into a black hole, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. what happens then to you? Mm -hmm. And is it, is it bad luck? Mm -hmm. And he answered that question with, yes, that's definitely bad <laughs> luck. <laughs> so it's a, the, these are at the moment my, my favorite books. What is this cat? Uh, that's uh, from Japan. I bought it there and it's just um, a tiny toy. I like toys. Yes. Yeah, you saw that. Uh, you saw that we also like to work with typography. Yeah. So um, here we have the goodbye on it. Um, we have this this quote over here uh, from Charles Eames: "The details are not the details; they make the design." I have been inspired when I've been to New York. Um, to the Ace Hotel, mm -hmm. I stood there for, for quite some time, and um, how they work with copy text. And I love how um, if, if buildings interact with you mm -hmm. um, over, over just tiny snippets of text, and they say something to you. And uh, th there you can see the soul of those who thought about that. Yeah. And uh, most people stop when they build something. I think that copy text is very important. Just love it. So let's go to the restroom, which is over here. Yeah. Yeah. Again, plastic. It's again plastic. Uh, I have to say, uh, it's it's. We thought a long, long, long about it. What what exactly we want to put there? Uh, I play a lot of tennis, so we thought about old tennis balls. But you cannot line to old tennis balls. It just doesn't work. And they might smell and everything, and uh, so we bought those. Uh, we could give them to a kindergarten maybe afterwards, so yeah. for some reuse. But still, this is something which hurt us a bit in the conceptualization. And also, my daughter said, "No, don't use plastic," and they're absolutely right. So, but these are just things that uh, we learn, and I guess in the next iteration we wouldn't do it again. Then we yeah, would but look I mean, for something you, else. You, yeah, at some point you need to learn from things, and then. Um, yeah, you come up, people come up with another idea. So if you have any other solution, instead of putting plastic balls, we're very happy to hear your, uh, your thoughts uh, so we can give them to kindergarten maybe and replace it with something sustainable. I like that idea. If you come up with something, just let us know. <laughs> it's true. Yeah, but what else do we have? We have, the, we have nice soaps. Yes, that's important, I think. Nice smell. And yeah, you have room spray. Which yes. Not, I mean, yes. Yeah. So... Should always smell nice. I think everything should smell nice. Uh, it should look pretty. Also uh, uh, here with our plant and and again, the club, the music uh, in the bathroom, and uh, the bathroom is also something which is maybe not so usual. But uh, if you go to a club, oftentimes you also have speakers in the club uh, yeah. in the in the in the restroom. Yeah. Yeah. And do you use the the shower to the showers? Yeah, Daniel always uses this when he comes here because he doesn't have one at home. And uh, then I say, okay, you can use the soap, you can use the shower, it's okay. So he's going to do that right after our meeting. Actually, our pipe broke yesterday. Oh, really? <laughs> so now I have to do that. Yeah, don't joke about these things, it's going to make it serious. You can see this element, which Daniel came up with, um, the idea of, again, creating a nice sound as well. Mm -hmm. So that you experience such a room multi-sensory. Mm -hmm. 
So you would smell, you would uh, touch, you would uh, see, you would hear, just in a bit improved you, way. Like how is it? It's just foam, and then what is this? It's it's a special foam that is like sound absorbing, and it's yeah. felt on top. So yeah, and it's again a reminder on post-its, you know, because you come here, you you know, you go in the bathroom, but you still have this kind of like way of okay, work with post-its. It's kind of like the reference to it. There, there's for sure so many like little details that you don't see at first sight, but you get the feeling that someone put like love and thought to it. Like for example, they just not, I mean, who is this tall? Like yes. it's painted yellow here, like you don't see yes. it in the first place, but it's ah, like good. someone, someone looked there, yes. someone thought about it. Yes. Yeah. Also, the things need to be pretty that you maybe not see at the first yeah. glance. You don't, you don't see, but then you, let, you feel there, comfortable, you, you, you feel know, it. you feel it. And it's not so much about, and this will be experienced with a lot of clients, they don't want to show off anymore, you know, yeah. they don't want fancy furniture or something, but they want that people feel comfortable, either the people who work there, yeah. the visitors and all this. And I think that little details that, that make the atmosphere, you know, this yeah. multi-sensoric. I just spent two weeks uh, fixing our space and like when you come in it still looks the same because it's just changes that you don't see, yeah. but yes. you feel it like it's a different energy. Yes. So, yes. Um, yeah. yes, and again the idea that it doesn't need to be expensive. Yeah. It yeah, just, I, I mean, this is like, I don't know, 20 euro maybe, you know? Yeah. Uh, it is a design element, but it also has a function. Well, I got really inspired for sure. I'm going to use this idea for our podcast room because we still need to yeah. come up with a good um, idea for sound absorbing. Yes. Uh, I'm going to research what we can do instead of plastic. That's balls, fantastic. But I like the idea of putting something in there. <laughs> no, I don't want to sit down. I don't get out anymore. <laughs> Um, and there was yeah a few elements that I thought was really nice. Should we end this here in the bathroom, or should we maybe go to the kitchen? Because I heard the best part is always. Let's go to go. The kitchen. Yeah, that's that's maybe better. <laughs> Berghain, the best part is on the toilet. Yes, I've never been to the Berghain. Seriously? No, seriously, I've never been there. So yeah, but I have to uh, uh, I have to say that uh, without uh, the help of Daniel and his team. Um, this wouldn't have been possible and um, I think that uh, because we were talking so closely about it and you've put so much love and effort into it, it became what like this. Your, like what spaces do you, because you um, mentioned Axel Springer before like, and then you work with Ole a lot, what is your kind of, um, what spaces do you, do you design, when do you come in, are you more like interior or is it more like architect like yeah. what what is it it's very funny because i hear this question quite a lot like most mostly people ask what's your specialization yeah and uh, our specialization is that we don't have one you which know, is that, i love it that, i that hate we're always specialization <laughs> questioning things you know we're quite yeah. naive on things so yeah. basically we're doing projects from 8000 hectares to design so whole cities down mm -hmm. to this little space so yeah. this is one of the smallest spaces that we did but we do all the range in between and yeah. um, I'm always trying to like make people understand that you know nowadays in this uh, kind of time that we need to disrupt rethink everything specialization doesn't help you all the time you it know? makes me so. feel really bad when people say they're not like what is your specialization I'm like oh fuck it I, I yeah. have to look for my <laughs> yeah what's my specialization <laughs> yeah it's true yeah. it's true cool yes well thank you so much Thank you for being here and... Uh, Anything to add on? No, we've no. seen everything. That's it. It's also just a tiny space, you know. No, but there's so much to see. I mean, I guess I'll see like a million... <laughs> I'll see a million things uh, when we start working on... Oh, it moves also, right? Does it move? It yeah, could. all movable, yeah. yeah. Uh, when we start working on the keynote topic now, I'll probably Yay. have like a million questions to ask. I can't wait. <laughs> Me too. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Thank Daniel. You. Yeah, oh yeah, don't forget to, uh, ah. there's the next video here, there's another video there, no, wrong, no, right. I get it wrong every time. There's the next video here and please subscribe to the channel, something like that. Woo! <laughs>